The story we have today is about Motown's first signed female performer. This vocalist was supposed to become what Mary Wells was. She was one of the amazing vocalists that was neglected and eventually forgotten due to Motown's massive roster. Mabel John is the centerpiece of today's video. Before we get started, please leave a like on today's video, subscribe to the channel, and push that notification bell to be sure you won't miss out on any more uploads. Now without further ado, let's cue that intro. Mabel John was born on November 3rd, 1930 in Bastrop, Louisiana. She is the eldest of Murtis and Lily John's nine children. Mabel, she's the oldest sister of Little Willie John, who is an outstanding vocalist. When she was a child, her family would relocate to Arkansas, where her father would find work at a paper factory. The John children grew up in a musical household. When she was a child, her and her siblings formed a gospel group which their mother played the guitar. Willie stood out most in the group and shortly after he would leave to pursue a solo career. The family would relocate to Detroit, Michigan in 1941 after their father had found a better job. John, she would attend Cleveland Intermediate High School and graduated from Parishion High School. Following graduation, John accepted a position as an insurance representative with Friendship Mutual Insurance Agency. Bertha Gordy, Barry's Gordy mother, was in charge of this firm. John later left a job to attend Lewis Business College to earn a college degree. She later bumped into Miss Gordy, who told Mabel about her son Barry creating songs and seeking for somebody to sing them. Miss Gordy remembered John's ability to sing and put her in touch with Barry. Gordy mentored John and even accompanied her on piano at local shows. This collaboration would continue with Gordy developing a reputation for himself locally with his songwriting abilities and abilities to negotiate agreements. Due to this, John was in a very strong position when she was able to perform at the Flame Show Bar in 1959. This same day, tragically, was Billie Holiday's final performance before her death. John's performance at the bar had drew the attention of United Artists Records, where she would eventually secure a contract. Now with United Artists, John released zero material, which made it super easy for Gordy to negotiate her release when he established Tamala Records. Along with the Miracles, John was among the first musicians Gordy signed. In fact, she was the label's sole female solo performer at the time. In 1960, John released her first set of songs with Who Wouldn't Love a Man Like That? He's a fine, young, a healthy man. My every wish is here. No love. I guess there's no love. And action speaks louder than words. Gordy's original vision for his label was to be the number one blues label. During this period, Gordy found success with young girl groups such as the Marvelettes and the Supremes, who ironically supplied background vocals for John. These acts had appealed to a younger audience and a new younger sound began to transform the music business. Gordy proceeded to thin out his roster after having a lot of success with the younger sound. Initially, he started by removing his early blues signings. Gordy kept John and transferred her to a background vocals until 1962 when he parted ways with her. The following year, John joined Stax Records, where she hoped her skills would be better acknowledged. During her time with the company, she recorded a numerous of singles, including You're Taking Up Another Man's Place. But you don't want nobody else to need me. What kind of same time, same place. Like it's the last time. I'm a big girl now. Cry like a baby. 
when I did not Don't hit me no more. I'm so sorry. You had to slap Abel Mabel. My name is Mabel. And don't you think I ain't Abel? Running out. I'm running out of teardrops. Running out of heartache. If your good thing is about to end. I don't have to beg you to hold me. And 1966, John released her only album called Stay Out the Kitchen. 1968, John joined Ray Charles Ray Letts, where she stayed for a few months until receiving some unfortunate news. Lily Willie John passed away in jail for unknown circumstance. Now, if you want more information about her brother, Lily Willie John, please check out his video. The link is in the description below. She stopped singing for a while after receiving this bad news and she would fall into a deep depression. It wasn't until 1970 that Ray Charles approached her about returning to the Ray Letts as a musical director. During her tenure as a Ray Lett, John co-wrote 50 songs for Charles. In 1977, John left the Ray Letts and moved on to manage gospel groups putting secular music behind her. John only returned to secular music on rare occasions, such as when she recorded her final single, Time Stops, in 1991. Come true. Time stops. John has done a lot for her community since the late 70s when she had founded Joy Community Outreach to End Homelessness. Every day, her charity had fed and clothed over 100 individuals. John received her Doctor of Divinity degree in 1993. The Rhythm and Blues Foundation awarded her a Pioneer Award that following year. John passed away on August 25th, 2022 at the age of 91. She was survived by her five children. John was unfairly overlooked through her whole career. If you just listen to John's whole catalog, you'll see that she's incredibly gifted. And to be honest, if given the appropriate push, and surrounded her by a decent team, her career could have gone somewhere. Mabel was simply forgotten about by the label she was under and eventually overshadowed by her brother's success. 